This bridge is gonna try to crush the bus. Will it succeed? Find out in this video. Hey, this is YBR with Beeman G Drive, and today we're gonna be taking a look at a mod that is both a vehicle and a level at the exact same time. What am I even talking about? Well, if we go to the vehicle selector, we have a thing called the Bascule Bridge, and we have two options. We have the single leaf and the double leaf, and we can spawn those up wherever we want. We can go to a map and add these in any location where a bridge might exist, or a much simpler solution is you go to the map selector and you load up the bridge called Gibson Strait, which has the bridges already placed perfectly, so you don't need to edit any maps to enjoy this mod. So here's my question for you. If you have bridges like this, what would you do with them? Because the cool thing about this bridge is it is a J-beamed structure that can move. So you can hit the space bar and it'll raise or lower the bridge like so. And then you can also use page up and page down to finely tune the angle. Right now, I'm just going to try to drive over the bridge before it raises too high and we can't make it back over. And this blue buck is not the best vehicle for this, but it is just barely able to make it with the rear suspension basically smashing into the back of the bridge. And it was still raising. So if we try this again, there's no way it's going to work. I'm going to try it again anyways because I like to see what happens, but I'm almost certain we're just going to stop halfway going up the bridge. Yeah, just like that. Sorry, Blue Buck, but you ain't going to cut it. So we're going to need more room to get up to speed, and to make things a little bit easier, we can also get a car that's more well suited for jumping a bridge. And I'm doing a 360 apparently. That was not intentional, but that's okay because we are still lined up. And I'm going to go ahead and swap this with a Charrier Vivas. We'll grab the Rally Gravel because that has ground clearance and speed. So right now the bridge is at its full height. And one of the problems with the bridge being at its full height is it's really hard just to transition from the road to the bridge. Because as you see here, we are going to just smash right into the bridge and it pops us upwards into the air. So we're not even touching the bridge at the moment. We are just flying and hoping for the best. The rear drive shaft is broken, but we have successfully made it over the bridge, even though it was terribly, terribly ugly. And it involved me completely ruining my car because the front and rear are ruined from doing that. I could try to drive, but it ain't going to do nothing. If we had more ground clearance though, it might be okay. So we're gonna up the ground clearance and go with the D35 Beast, which is always my answer when the question is, what car has more ground clearance than what I'm currently driving? So we gotta do a little bit of a maneuver to get this thing in the right angle though, because it's so long. But now we're lined up for the bridge and we are gonna be going about 50 miles per hour. Uh, we are still kind of crashing into it, but the extra ground clearance makes it where we are still driving up the bridge instead of being flung over the bridge. Now, the last question is, do we have enough speed to clear it? Not exactly. We are just a little bit too slow, and we are hanging on for dear life. So what do you do in a situation like this? I got the solution for you. You catch the truck. How do you catch the truck? You close the bridge, and it'll catch it very, very gently. And by very, very gently, I mean it'll be completely crushed. This is a bridge after all with thousands of pounds of metal. It can easily crush a regular vehicle like the D35 Beast. <laughs> and when it crushes, it really crushes. That is amazing. I'm going to go ahead and just save that real quickly. And then also I want to see what happens when we try to open it again and then drive across this gap. That gap looks so small, I feel like we could drive a stanced car over it. So that's what we're going to try to do. Stanced version of the Pessima, you're up. Also, you probably shouldn't try to spawn up cars while you are on the bridge because a lot of the time that will happen. They will spawn under the bridge, so you got to go ahead and just teleport them here. And then we got to reset it again because the engine's hydro lock. And now we can see, can it cross the bridge? Oh, by the way, the truck caught on fire at some point. Okay. So here we go, stanced vehicle over the bridge. Oh, uh, that is nothing. I have seen speed bumps way worse than that. All right, so just for fun, we will go ahead and park the stance car right here as we open up the bridge. Try to make it like right in the middle of the body. That looks pretty close. So we go back to the bridge, get it lined up where we can see the truck. And this time, I'm not going to let it open all the way. I'm just going to open it little by little. And if I see anything interesting happening, I will stop. Now, one thing that does kind of suck is the camera is not connected to the height of the bridge, so you always have to manually adjust the camera if you want to see the very tip top like I'm doing here. And with the fire and the smoke, it's kind of hard to see anything, but you can at least see the crushed state of the vehicle. There are body panels there, but all I can really see is the general shape of the bed of the truck, and that's about it. Everything else is just mangled. 
So let's continue opening the bridge. And somehow, it is still holding on. I have no idea how I managed to glue the truck to the bridge, but that is pretty impressive, I would say. And nothing really interesting happened with the Pessima. It's just sitting there half on the bridge. So we're going to try something different. We're going to load up the damage and see what it looks like. And right off the bat, there is a giant wall of doom. So that's not good. Although, interestingly, I think it can still drive. Yeah, it can still drive because the front wheels and the engine are mostly intact. Except it looks like we're running away from the wall of doom. Can we even see the damage with that impending doom wall behind us? Oh, well, actually, we can a little bit. Surprisingly, it's more intact than I expected, and I think that's because I saved the damage before I opened the bridge, which just destroyed it even more. Unfortunately, this is basically impossible to drive, so it's as good as done to me. And you know what? We still have a pessimist sitting on the bridge like this. I think the proper solution to this is we slam into it with another vehicle and see what happens. So let's swap out my D35 Beast for something a bit faster like the 390 GTR Group 4. And to get to the other side of the bridge, we can do a small loop. So I hit the raise bridge button, then I jump back to the bull light, and we are racing to the bridge as fast as we can because we need to get there before it raises so high that my car just can't make the jump. And looking at it, it looks like we are going to make this just fine. Going 60 miles per hour, a little bumpy. But we cleared it and are just barely holding on to the road. My goodness. I almost fell off the road and tipped at the exact same time, but we made it. And now we are going to save the Pessima. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we save the Pessima, but my car falls into the water? That's my new goal. So bump the Pessima across the bridge. And now I'm going slow enough where I should just fall right in. Or maybe I'll be stuck. Oh, am I going to be stuck? Come on. Fall, fall, fall. Yes. That is a success. So how is the Pessima though? Can we actually drive with it or is it still stuck? It can drive. We have successfully freed the Pessima. All goals have been achieved. Now we just need to reset everything for the next idea because I don't need a bunch of half open bridges. And that is one thing that's nice about the bridges. You just reset them and they go back down nice and low. All right, I want another car to crush with the bridge. But this time we're going to use the other bridge. So how about we get the Tograk QE, which is the electric version of the Tograk. And just for fun, we're going to drive towards the bridge and open it at the same time. So the Tograk's off driving across the other bridge. And that worked surprisingly well. I expected that to go awfully, but we are on the road. The bridge should be opened. Yeah, that is exactly what I was trying to do. All right, so the bridge doesn't need to open that much, so we'll get it to stop. Go back to the tow rack. Whoa, that was a little bad because I overshot it, but we're okay still. And then we just do a 180, and we're going to crush just the rear because this is an all-wheel drive vehicle, so we should still be able to drive even after the whole rear end is crushed. So we're going to back it up as far as I can, and then eventually that's going to happen. We go back to the bridge, and then we do the crush. And I do like on this one that the camera's focused on the join, not the middle of the bridge, so you could really see it crush the car without having to do anything fancy with the camera angles. And that thing really got crushed, and it's still getting crushed. That bridge is not giving up. Although I do think that's as far as it's going to go. And thankfully, we still can put down power to the front wheels, so we're going to save this. Although I have a dumb idea. If we smash into the car coming from that direction, what'll happen? Thankfully, 390 GTR is standing by, ready to smash. And this is completely unnecessary considering how absolutely destroyed the car already is. But more destruction is always better than less destruction, right? I think so, so here we go. <laughs> it just got bent. And yes, I fell off the bridge, but I don't care because look what I did to them. And they can still drive. All right, we're going to save this once more. And we're going to hit it again with the 390 GTR and see if we can bend it even more. I really don't know how much more the car can be bent, but I'm going to give it a good try and bend it as much as I possibly can. Okay, at this point, it's basically working as a ramp, actually. It has been bent. So let's see, does it still drive? Yes. So we save it, reset it back over to the other side of the island, and then load up the damage. And look at this. Uh-oh. We have another giant wall of doom, but this one's just a small pillar. And the damage overall is just absurd. I can't tell what's what. 
but I should be able to drive a little bit. We're going to turn the electronic stability control off, and then it'll just freely spin those front wheels as it gets what little traction it can to pitifully drag itself along. This is unbelievable. Just looking at this thing, the fact that it drives is stupid impressive. But that is one of the benefits of electric cars in this game I've noticed is the electric ones are usually quite a bit more durable than the gas powered ones for some reason. Unfortunately though, steering is pretty awful with this thing and we are a little bit stuck. So here's just one final look at the damage because it is so unbelievably destroyed. And now it's time for the next test. So we need to go back over to the Bolide and we're going to replace him with a big fat Wentward DT40L. We'll get the hero even so that way we get the rockets because I'm sure the rockets can be fun and oh no! Hold on bus! Oh my goodness, look at me drift this bus down the hill and actually keep it intact. That was amazing. So I'm going to save that spot, start backing up the bus and then also raise the bridge at the same time. So we're doing some serious multitasking here and all I want to do is just hang half of the vehicle off of the edge just like we did for the tow rack. and now would be a good time to mention. If I did that dumb thing where I had a random clip at the start of the video, I would be like, this bridge is going to try to crush the bus. Will it succeed? Find out in this video. Oh, that is really good. It's just crushing it right in the middle and there's some damage on the rear too, but I think this thing we'll still be able to drive really, really good. So what we need to do is we need to just go ahead and save this just in case this goes wrong. And then I want to try opening up the bridge and freeing the bus naturally. And it looks like this might work, so I don't need to load the damaged version of the bus. All that's left now is to pull it onto the road without causing too much damage. And you can see the middle part of the bus has been crumpled paper thin and there's like no structural support there, but don't you fall on me. You need to get onto this road. Oh, this is great. It is so crushed. It looks amazing. And you know what? I bet it drives all right. So here we go, going around the corner. How does it do? Actually, surprisingly well. Like I barely noticed that the bus has almost been cut in half. This is impressive. What we gotta do then, is we got to see is can the bus jump the bridge while it's damaged so i'm gonna just go ahead and start doing a 360 there we'll start opening up the bridge go back to the bus and we continue that 360 so it's a full 180 back it up a little bit more so we got lots of room to get up to speed and give the time some bridge to open it up and now we're gonna see can we clear the bridge with my smash to bits bus let's find out oh did you see how it crumpled in the middle where it was already damaged but it made the jump super easily there is no doubt it was gonna make it there the only problem is is I may have overshot the landing just a bit all right so I got another dumb test I want to do I want to see can we bridge the gap in the bridge that sounds weird but I want to make it where the bus is touching both sides of the bridge at the same time can it be done we're gonna know in about three seconds two one zero it can be done. It actually looks pretty sturdy too. I think what we need to do is we need to check how sturdy is it. So we're going to just grab this tow rack here and we are going to smash right into the bus going as fast as we can, which isn't going to be going too fast, but if the bus is sturdy, it shouldn't care. Yeah, that's pretty sturdy. I like that. All right, next test. What happens when you close the bridge with a bus right on top of it? Actually, surprisingly little, oh, there is drama. I lied. I was going to say surprisingly little drama, but that is some serious drama. The bus has been crumpled up a bit. I think it would still drive, but it might just grab that wheel. Look at that wheel just barely above the bridge's grasps. And with no rear wheels on the ground, it really can't drive. Sure, it could rocket itself around, but eh, I don't feel like doing that. Instead, we're going to move on to the next test. We're going to go to the drop test which should be pretty self-explanatory, but if you need me to explain it to you, I'm going to drop the bus on the bridge and we're going to test what happens, aka the drop test. And of course, I want to make sure I have a nice camera angle for this, so this should be about where the bus is going to land. Perfect. Did a pretty good amount of damage to the bridge, so we'll drop it again. And then again. And again. Actually, we might only do three because it doesn't look like the damage is changing much. So we need to increase the power of the drop test by going with a bigger heavier vehicle 
So let's grab the T-Series and we're going to go all out with this one. We're going to get the T-75 cement mixer and then we'll go get the camera lined up again. So this is a little bit smaller, so it'll probably hit more in the middle of the bridge than the edge. So let's see what this does. Come here, T-Series. Oh! Wow! This bridge is strong! It doesn't seem like it's getting any more damage from the T-Series, so you know what that means, right? More height. We're going to increase the height way over here. It's probably like double the original height. Then we got to get the camera lined up in time. That's good. Oh, it kind of went off to the side now. Okay, well, we can adjust the camera for that and see is there any change in the amount of damage here? Not really. Yes, one part over there fell off the edge, but the overall shape of the structure of the bridge is very, very strong still. Which means we need something heavier, and we'll move it a little bit to the left. So what's even heavier than a T-Series? Really, there's only one thing that's convenient that's heavier than the T-Series, and that's the concrete retaining wall. This is very heavy, and this better do some damage. If this, from that height, can't do any damage, this bridge is nearly unbreakable. So here you go, got the slow-mo going. It's not going to hit right in the middle, but it should hit in a good spot. Oh, there you go. I see the whole bridge moving on that one. If we hit it more on the edge, like closer to the center where the two pieces meet, that will definitely do something. So we'll bring it to the right. Let's go about there. I don't know if it's going to hit the left or the right side of the bridge, but it should be pretty close to center. Maybe it'll hit both even. All right, so now we got the fresh side of the bridge. We got the right side only. That's fine. And let's see what just the cinder blocks do. Oh, yeah. Cinder blocks are strong. It was actually a good thing that I got the brand new side of the bridge because you can see just how strong the cinder blocks actually are. They are very strong. And it's not just the weight of the blocks that's holding it down. It's just dented in that direction from the blocks going boom. And now it's really badly dented. Here's the next question then. What happens when we try to raise the bridge when it's in a condition like this? Amazingly, it is still able to raise up. Well, it's able to make itself level. I should say, which means we got to try to drive across it. Togrek, what are you doing over here in the dirt and stuff? Get back onto the road, and we are going to see if you can cross the bridge. And I don't think we need to go that fast since the landing zone is so low to the ground. So nice and careful. That was bumpy, though. And the landing was not the greatest. It was a bumpy ride, but we made it across the bridge. No problem. So going back to that test, though, I want to also see... If you just put a lot of weight on the bridge, is that enough to break it? Or is it going to be pretty sturdy even if you put tons of cinder blocks on it? And I do literally mean tons of cinder blocks. So that wasn't a really big height, but I want it to be nice and gentle. So we'll reset the bridge and then reset the blocks gently on top of it. Yes, the bottom most layer is clipping with the bridge a little bit, but that's okay. Because the rest of the layers are perfectly on top of it. So here is cinder block set number two, which is going to about double the weight. Although not quite because some of the blocks are on the left side of the bridge, but most of them are on the right side. And we'll do one more set of cinder blocks. If it can hold these ones up, I will declare the bridge as being very strong. So we'll get the blocks up there, make everything all reset up, and then unfreeze physics. And yeah, the bridge is holding it just fine, so it is very strong. At least it is when it's in its static position. What happens, though, if you try to raise the bridge? It's struggling on the right side, but it is moving it. It is moving all of those cinder blocks out of the way so it can tilt upwards. That is a mighty strong bridge. And I should also mention, the other bridge behind us should be basically the same as this one because it appears to just literally be half of one of these bridges, and that's the only real difference between them. And it's kind of amusing watching all the blocks roll down the bridge, isn't it? And I think I have one more trick up my sleeve until I'm done, and I have no idea where those cinder blocks even came from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out everything out of the way real quickly, and then we'll do the final test. And what in the world is going on in the water over there? Did you see that? Something was spinning in the water. This is not how cinder blocks are supposed to work. Anyways, as I said, I'm going to clear everything out, and I'll be back in a second. 
All right, everything has been reset. So now we're going to mess around with the tuning of the vehicle. And I know it's funny calling it a vehicle and saying you're tuning it, but that's really exactly what we're going to do. So first off, we have a handful of different parts that we can add and remove. There's nothing in particular here that I want to add or remove, but I wanted you to know that you could change out the parts if you wanted to. Now what I want to do though is I want to go to the tuning menu and I want to increase the lift speed to 150% and increase the amount it opens all the way to 45 degrees. So this makes it the most absurd third bridge ever. You can also make it only lifts a certain amount. Like if you want it to be, you know, 20 degrees or something, which is a very reasonable amount where you could easily jump it all the time. You can set it up like that. And then again, since we're here, you can also change the colors to whatever you want. So now mine's blue. So now with my newly tuned up bridge, let's see what it looks like when we open it up at full speed. Okay. Okay. I admit it's still not that fast, but we're moving a lot of weight here. This is not easy to do and I think about now is the normal maximum height it would go so everything you see from here on out is just extra it went so vertical I had to zoom out a little bit this is scary I don't even know exactly what vehicle to use to approach this so we'll try a couple of different things first we'll go with the tow rack again because that one seemed to work pretty well on the regular bridge first thing we gotta do is back it up a bit to get more speed and we really can't maintain that much speed through this corner so that's probably close to as much speed as we'll even get so here we go we're gonna be going about 70 miles per hour maybe even 80 and yeah well we literally just crashed into the bridge it does not have enough ground clearance to conquer the bridge so who's next how about we go with the d35 beast again I know I use him a lot, but he's really good and he's got that ground clearance, so hopefully he will work. And I guess we could also use the D10 Zetas, but they're not as long, and I think the extra length will be beneficial here. But again, we need to go around the corner to make sure we're going as fast as we possibly can. Just gonna back it up to right around there. That should be good, save the spot. And here we go. Can the extra ground clearance help, or is it still gonna be like we're slamming into a brick wall? Let's find out in three, two, one, and mostly like a brick wall still. That did not help much at all. This is simply too steep for your ordinary vehicle. So it's time for the final attempt. And for the final attempt, we're gonna get the hero bus in this thing and we're gonna use the thrusters and just see what happens. Because that's literally the only thing I can think of that would have a chance because thruster power does not care about bumps that would destroy your suspension. It'll keep going like this, and it is working exactly as I expected. The power of the bus is fully revealed as it easily goes over the bridge. That was amazing, except we didn't actually clear the jump. So maybe we'll do this one more time, and I wanna actually clear the jump nice and cleanly. Oh, actually, you know what, forget that, look at this. We are damaging the bridge every time we use it because the bus hits it so hard. That is interesting. So watch the amount of damage that the bridge has right now compared to after the bus goes over it. So boom, good bit extra damage to the bridge. The bus goes over it, mostly clean. I kind of stopped caring about what the bus does, but it made it across. And now I want to look at what the bridge looks like. And oh, there's even a bigger dent than before, I'm pretty sure. That's fun. Anyways, I think that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, this has been YBR. And remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by what angle the bridge is. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time. You can really see that the bridge has been pushed in more now. And we're just going to keep pounding at it.